Welcome to the next in our study on women of the Bible. Uh, this week we're returning to the New Testament and to the book of Acts. Our first lady is the name of Rhoda. Rhoda's name means Rose. She lived about AD 43 during the first Christian persecution of Herod Agrippa, the grandson of the infamous Herod the Great. You can see Matthew chapter 2 for more on him. She was the maid of John Mark's mother, Mary, in whose home the small congregation in Jerusalem often gathered to pray. One night they had prayed long past midnight for the release of Peter from prison. Since James, the brother of John, had already been put to death, the infant church feared the same fate for Peter. During the prayer session, Rhoda heard a knock at the gate and ran to the door. She immediately recognised Peter's voice when he spoke to her. But in her excitement, she failed to open the door. She left Peter standing outside the closed gate. Bolting into the room and interrupting those praying, Rhoda announced with great excitement that Peter himself stood at the door. The Christians did not believe her. They even questioned her sanity. They concluded that the visitor was Peter's angel, as it was a common Jewish belief that every Israelite was given a special guardian angel who resembled him. They knew Peter was being held in a well-guarded prison. Rhoda never doubted whose voice she had heard. She was terribly excited but not surprised that God had heard the prayers of the young congregation. Unlike the others, who had to open the door and see Peter with their own eyes. Rhoda had great faith enough to know God would answer their prayers, even in the most unexpected ways. The mundane tasks assigned to Rhoda as a household servant do not keep her from experiencing the joys of being a part of kingdom business through her genuine believing faith. The next woman also in the book of Acts um, is Lydia. So Lydia came from Thyatira. This was a city in the western province of Lydia in Asia Minor. Her name originally might have been the designation of her home, a woman of Lydia. At the time Lydia met Paul, she lived um, in, at Philippi, a leading city of Macedonia on the European continent. As a wealthy and influential businesswoman, Lydia sold articles dyed purple, a prized colour made from certain mollusks, a respectable and lucrative trade. She had a spacious home that could accommodate many guests and servants to meet their needs. This had to be a rare achievement in her day. She surely must have been a hard-working, bold, intelligent woman to achieve the success that she enjoyed. One Sabbath day, Lydia went to the river's shore that had been designated by the Roman authorities of Philippi as a place of prayer and worship for the Jews. There she met Paul and Silas, who had been in Philippi only a short time. While others along the river may have rejected Paul's words about Jesus, Lydia accepted them and became a believer. Once she believed, she made a confession of her faith to her whole world through baptism, and then she assembled her entire household, told them what had happened to her, and asked them to believe. After her entire household accepted who Christ was, and they too were baptised, Lydia invited Paul and Silas to stay in her home. When Paul and Silas were thrown into a Philippian prison, 
Lydia visited them and attended to their needs. Her house became the meeting place of the first European church. Lydia was quick to perceive that what had been hers before her conversion, home, business, possessions, now belonged to the Lord. She had a new partner, the Lord Jesus, a new purpose to serve him, and a new satisfaction in seeking to be effective and successful in order to glorify the Lord. Her career aspirations do not hinder her sharing the gospel with family and friends. She was not too busy to take time for hospitality, according to Acts 16 and verse 15. Lydia's name appears in scripture only twice. She was seemingly the first Gentile convert in Europe, the first Christian businesswoman, and the first believer to open her home as a worship centre for European Christians. Not only to Paul and the early church, but also to generations to come, Lydia proved the importance and influence of a woman of determination, foresight and generosity. Thanks very much.